right, uh, today's class is the final class, and we are going to cover the reports in CLIP ITC. Now, in CLIP, there are two kind of categories of reports. There are what we call built-in reports, and that these are the ones you see listed here. And, and in this screen, the reports tab, you're able to um, click on the report either over here along the left-hand margin or through the drop-down menus here. So custom reports, these reports here ought to correspond to these reports over on this side. However you're more comfortable navigating, you can do either of those. Now, as I mentioned, there are two categories of reports. These are built-in reports. Now, you create settings, you know, date ranges, crew ranges, etc., to kind of tailor it to what you need. We also have what we call custom reports. Now, for those of you who used um, our previous versions, that would be equivalent under reports, custom reports, what we called user-defined lists. If you convert from one of our older versions to CLIP ITC. Unfortunately, um, your reports here, the structures you've set up, these reports you've set up, do not come over. Uh, the, as you'll see, there's a significantly different way, which I think is easier actually to create these custom reports in ITC. And thus it's difficult to kind of match, line this up with what ITC provides for custom reports. What I'm going to do is basically go through these reports one at a time. And frankly, this might get a little tiresome. Um, some reports are very similar to um, Clip XE, but I know not all of you were Clip users prior to, to getting into Clip ITC, so I want to at least touch on those. Um, but we'll just work our way through. Um, now, again, we have about an hour, 15, hour and a half to, to meet together. I want some time for questions at the end. At some point, if this is, um, if I'm not covering this fast enough, not that I want to rush, but there are a lot of reports here, I may just jump ahead to do custom reports because those are usually a little more um, difficult to grasp or a little, you know, so, so I want to make sure that we spend sufficient time. Okay, well, let's get started. As you see, we have certain categories of reports, customer related reports, job related, employee. Uh, the print route sheets is under reports here, uh, work projections, uh, reprint statements, and, and then the custom reports. Um, we try to group these logically for folks. And over here on the left, then we'll be looking at the customer reports, customer list. And I'm going to use this as an opportunity to talk about the formatting of reports because they're fairly similar. There are some consistencies in this. Um, so you have a show report close and, and what you would do is you would set the um, options we have here. So for the customer list, we want to be able to say, okay, I want to sort it by customer number. And I don't, I'm not going to include patterns or on hold. Um, and I want it in landscape mode and include city, state, and zip. I hit show report. And then this is what the report looks like. And it's including phone numbers, status here of this. All right. Now, what I want to do is show a couple of um, things that are common in most, if not all, of the reports. You have these icons across the top. Um, here, this just will refresh it, um, which um, I'm not sure why you would do this because you just change the filter and run it again if you wanted to look at, at you know a different display. You have here the ability to scroll through the report. Um, the single little arrowy thing here, triangle, means it'll go to the next page. The double means it will take you to, or the, the previous page or the next page. The double arrows mean that it'll take you to the very last page of the report. Um, this little icon of the piece of paper, if you click on it, it'll toggle the view here. So um, here's one view, 
and actually these look pretty similar so a little bit different there uh, that's more evident in some of the other reports uh, this is a very valuable option the the downward pointing arrow allows you to save this report in different formats um, Acrobat, a PDF file, if you want to, uh, say, email this report to someone, you're able to save it in that format. Comma delimited Excel, Excel worksheet are all spreadsheet type um, ways of displaying and saving the report. Um, and some reports you might want to save in Excel so you can manipulate the information. You can do formulas, you can sort by different columns, etc. Excel is a great program and it's certainly worth um, any time you, you can uh, spend learning it better. I don't know it as well as a lot of people, but what I do know is that very, I, I like it a lot. Uh, you could turn this into a PowerPoint presentation. Rick, the rich text format allows you to edit some of this information here. To be honest, I'm not sure where the TIFF file is. I think that's a QuickBooks um, compatible file, but I don't know what that would be used for. Word Ar Web Archive, again, not sure how you'd use that. Word document is obvious. Um, and XPS, I think, is a variation of, of a word or a word processor. Um, so there are different ways to save it. And again, this is in most, if not all, of the reports. Then you have the print icon. And when you click on here, it will prepare it to be printed. Now, I don't have a printer hooked up, so mine all go to PDF. But here it is if you wanted to. Um, look at it and mine would print kind of funky because of the page width. Um, so this is where you'd print. And then over here, you've got a, a toggle document map. Again, not sure exactly what that used for that parameters. And then you have this to zoom in and out of the report. Um, this would uh, go just you know, so to that format or this format. So it's just a way to toggle between three common views, although I don't know how common this view would be. Um, and then finally, and this is nice, you've got a search function. So if you've got a long report and you're searching for a particular customer, oh, TIFF are image files. Thank you, Tootie. Um, Google, so the search, uh, so I come in here and I want to find Acme. So I type Acme and it highlights it here and shows me it on this and I could click on this and it would take me there. Uh, so that's nice to quickly navigate through a report to find a particular property, for instance, or customer that you wanted to look for. Now, again, the reason I'm going through these now is not because they're so important for the customer list, but that these are, again, common features to the reports, as is the filter. You can um, you don't have to start from scratch when you redo the report. You can just come to the filter, change the parameter here, hit show report, and there it'll modify what you were looking at. So when you're in reports and you want to change it, you don't have to get out of it. You can just go to the filter and, and change that. OK, so customer list. Next is uh, customer history. Now, the, the customer history is uh, basic. We, we looked at this slightly yesterday because this is a way to, to view your payments as an alternate to the uh, payment report down here. Um, but this will allow you, and, and one thing too, in previous versions of CLIP, you could get this customer history report out of the specific customer's account. You can no longer do that. And it was the same report, whether you did it from the customer's account or did it back under um, the reports, customer reports history. It was the same formatting there. Um, but we did, uh, and why I don't know why we've changed that, and maybe eventually if we get a demand for it, we will put this report back in the um, customer screen as well. So you can then select different values in here. So um, I wanted to see, let's say I want all the work for um, this time frame. So I'm going to do show job value, man hours, I'll do credits and debits, include contract jobs, and I'll sort by date. So I hit show this, and here it is. So this is showing me during the month of December what work I did for Bo Brummel. Here's the man hours, job value, here are some totals down here. And if I go to the very last part of the report, um, it should give me, well, it's not giving me the, 
it's, not, it's giving me a total man hours and, and total balance for this. Um, so it can be a useful report for you um, if you want history. Um, can columns be added or deleted? Okay, oh, all right. Um, so 2D adds that page width for printing can be adjusted in the printing setting scale to 75% more or less. Thank you. Um, can columns be added or deleted? These reports are pretty much limited to what you're seeing on the, the option screen here. There is not room for much customization unless you send it as a rich text format. You could then modify it or dumping it into Excel, you could modify columns and then the column widths and then uh, print. But as far as clip itself on the reports as are displayed here, really you're limited to how much you can modify those. Um, all right, source report. Now the source report is derived from, um, if we go into a customer here, so we're going to Acme here. The source is on the general screen and it says select source. This is how the customer heard about you. So we're going to put internet source here and save it. You're able to manipulate this list um, by here. You can click add new and then you can create other sources that, that you have used in the past. The value of this report is that it will give you not only how many customers you got from a particular source, but how much revenue they, that source has generated for you. So we'll go back to September 1st and we're going to look at um, internet search. So show report. Um, so here it's showing us we got two customers from the internet search. And so far we've gotten $2,400 from Muriali. Uh, Krishnan. So that seemed like that was a pretty profitable customer from that report. And this can help you to decide on how you want to invest your marketing money. Now, again, we can come here and we can look at um, all sources. And so for the same time period, um, walk up was the source. So here's a total um, here, oh, this is without source, sorry. Um, so this is where there's no source put in for the customer. And then walk up would be this, internet search, this one, and so on. Um, so again, this can be a useful report for you just to evaluate as you look to 2022, how you want to invest your marketing efforts based on um, how many people you got and then the job charge that you earned or the revenue for that source there. All right, next. Um, now, the, the accounts receivable report. Some of the reports, um, the reports will differ uh, in this category, especially depending on how you're doing your billing. So this is my copy where I am billing out of Clip ITC itself, not the copy that's integrated with QuickBooks. What this means is that um, your AR report is available here and it's, it's a different layout. We looked at this, I think briefly yesterday as well. The AR report shows you um, how far past due, oops, I wanna go to expand, how far past due invoices are. So we go back to the beginning of this. We've got Robert Smith. He's got a, an invoice 44 pa days past due for $15. He's got one three days past due for this amount and so on. Um, it doesn't break it down like our previous programs would into groups of 30, 0 to 30, 30 to 60, 60 to 90 over 90. Um, it's relatively easy enough to do that because, again, you can uh, send it into Excel. And there you can sort days overdue and you can group together those who are farthest past due and, and more recent, et cetera. Um, at the end of this report, you've got then the um, uh, total down here, if I can scroll down the bottom. Yeah, so I've got, I've got quite an AR, $267,000. Um, Again, this is for billing out of Clip directly without transferring to QuickBooks. I'll leave it up to you QuickBooks people to know how to get the same information out of QuickBooks desktop or QuickBooks online.
Um, likewise, sales tax report that will be for the version where you bill out of clip. Um, so I've already created the report at various times, and this is different from our other versions of Clip. And for those of you who never used Clip before, please uh, bear with me as far as these comparisons. In the other versions of Clip, when you did your billing during the billing process, you would get the sales tax report. Here, you can generate this report whenever you want to. So that's this filter here. So let's say I want my sales tax um, for July through September. I can come in here and I can go back to uh, July 1st through then. September 30th, and I can look at detail or summary. I'll look at summary first, so I hit show report. It's processing, I refresh, hit print, and here's now my sales tax. So note non-taxable debits and taxable debits total here. Total for, ta that's, I don't have a tax area assigned there, so it's a setup issue for me. Um, and then we have the, tax for these areas. So um, total for tax area. So total tax owed for Maryland sales tax, 314. Um, yeah, so again, part of it is uh, making sure you've got your sales tax set up as well as you can for this report. Um, what does a negative sign for days overdue mean? Okay, back on that accounts receivable report, um, as we saw, there were some, uh, customers with a negative. So here's this one here, Bob Allen, for instance. What that means is that when I generated this bill, it was with uh, net 15 for payment, it wasn't due upon receipt. So he's still he's not past due yet until it is um, you hit the the 15 days out. Then it'll start aging. So Robert Smith, this bill was due three days ago. So it doesn't mean the bill was created three days ago. I might have given him net 30 and it was created over a month ago. But this uh, negative number simply means that um, the bill's due date has not arrived yet. Uh, would the sales tax rate break down different tax areas? Yes, it does break down different tax areas. So if we go back into a customer here, you've got taxes here. So you might have different tax areas based on um, different municipalities where you service. It might not just be a straight uh, state sales tax, but whatever you have here would be reflected in the report there. Um, all right, then uh, to do report. Um, the to do's, I didn't spend a lot of time in this. So let me go back to kind of get to the source of this. Within the customer, you have this section here called to do's. For those of you who did use it in clip XE, this is equivalent to what was called the CMS. And this is where if a customer calls in, you can add a record of that interaction. So it might be like a, um, uh, just uh, let's see, call in. Is there a call in? I thought I had a, you know, there it is, incoming call. So I can make notes about the incoming call if appropriate. And then I can assign this to someone if need be, if they need to review it. If there's a follow up action, I could put a future date here. Um, and then I would save it. Now, where these show up, so let me go into this screen. If you click on the, um, the home, if the home page or the dashboard, you see this orange bar. So this is telling me that I have um, action items I have fallen behind in attending to. Um, so here, Ted Cruz, he called for a maintenance estimate. Bill Gates, um, he accepted an estimate we sent him. So these are outstanding to dos for for me that I haven't finished. And so this report shows that. So I can come in here. And I look for all of the ones for me. And I want um, all of them. And I'm going to go back a ways. To, so we'll see if I've got any here. Um, show report. Nope, don't have any. OK, let me go back more. Make sure I'm not, oh yeah, activity required. So now here are more 
that I have um, uh, that I've not attended to. So as management, you can assign these to different users and then you can follow up and you can see which what's completed um, or what hasn't been. So the, these, you know, from July, you know, you know, I needed to act, you know, take action on this and I haven't. So uh, my manager is going to be mad at me for that. Um, all right, so that's the um, to do's report there. So we come back uh, to reports. And uh, payment report we looked at. So this is where you can see what payments have been entered in the system. So let's say I want to look at all my payments for the um, December. I can go back earlier in the day then, show report. So here's all the payments I've gotten in so far this month. And again, I can export them to Excel if I needed to print them or manipulate or this information. I mean, it does give me a grand total down here too. Um, estimate report. We did talk briefly about estimates in customers. And so to go back in here and look at estimates, this report focuses on the status of an estimate. So when we go back to the report, we could select the status. So I might want to see, okay, I want to see all the ones that have been sent. And you know, again, we've got date ranges here I've got to be careful about. So we'll go back to uh, January 1st. So here are three estimates here that have been sent. It looks like the same amount. Um, and so this would give you the ability to um, stay on top of ones that have been sent, um, ones that have been accepted, or you can do check all, show report. So here now is quite a long list of estimates. And you might want to say, OK, I want to look at the ones that have been accepted. And then just review those for you know for customer service purposes. Um, so this is for the just staying on top of estimates and their statuses. Auto disconnected during the sales tax report. Okay, Amy. Um, uh, okay, hold on a second. Sorry. Um, Just replying to someone whose audio um, cut out. Okay, so this is the estimate report, packages report. Um, this will show you, for instance, let's say you want to know who all your installment customers are. You can click on installment, show all or just the active ones, and then show report. Oh, I've got to do this. Oh, again, date ranges. So here now are my installment customers who've been set up during this time frame, and here's the different values of their installments. I can export to Excel, number of jobs in each of those packages. Uh, so this can give you kind of an overview of the, the different packages you've got set up, and you can show all of them or charge by job. So yeah, so here's a longer list of those. Um, account balance report. Uh, this is um, kind of similar to the AR report in that it will just show you, but it'll show an aggregate. So this is how much Howard Stark owns us, owes us, Donald Trump, Daffy Duck, Bart Simpson. You know, famous people don't always pay their bills. Um, so here they are, and the total balances in descending order. And you can, you know, again, export to Excel if you want to manipulate the information here. Um, so again, just gives you an overview of two folks with balances, um, what the range is. So it's from two cents up through $20,000. Okay, that is um, covers the customer reports here. So next we're gonna look at the job reports, likewise along here. Uh, we'll start with the crew route list. Now, unfortunately, um, this very valuable report in XE it had an option to click modify where you could then ch actually change information. The report was interactive. This one is not. Uh, so I want to get a report um, only on my active customers. I want to see what, you know, for crew one. 
and I'll sort it by the street name here. Show report. And again, got to expand this puppy. So now by street name, that's kind of interesting. Doesn't certainly doesn't seem to be by alphabetically by street name. Oh, so it's um numerically and then within no no this is I don't think this is doing a street street name actually. I'll have to look at that. Um but I can come in here and change the filter and do it by um say crew and route show report. So this will recalculate it. And this just kind of gives you a picture of things you can look at it to evaluate routing sequence numbers. So if we scroll through here, we should have some. Yeah, so here are some of the routing sequence numbers that were generated when you did uh, save order permanently uh, during the routing process. And then here are the other routing sequence. Again, this is just um, we'll develop and make it interactive at some point. We do a lot of work editing. Um, I will find out from development about that. So let me make a, a note of that request. I, I know that's something that's been suggested before. Um, um, all right, so I've made a note of that. Okay, so next job costing report. Now this report is very is almost identical to what you have in Clip XE. Uh, this basically is designed to tell you who your most profitable customers are. Now, sadly, I've got kind of garbage in this lease more recently, so I'm going to go back to 2020. So I'm going to go January of 2020 till. Um, December of 2020, end of the year. And we'll see what we've got as far as um, show history, detail, sort by dollar per hour. Now, what this means is that I'm sorting by dollar per hour, which is going to show the least profitable customers on the top. So here's someone and, and my data's garbage because they did not track time. So if you want to have this report be valuable, there are two things you need to do. You need to track how long jobs are actually taking and you need to have a charge in here. If you own a calculator, as long as you have actual times and can look up the charge or what it should be, then you can do this off to the side. So let me scroll to the very last page, or let's go back one. So here's a Muriel Gurdian, and we've got here $45 charge. We have, again, bogus actual time because I missed, I got zeros. But like in these two here, it's showing us down here a total of $225, actual time of 45 minutes so we average 296 dollars an hour here um, so that's for lawn maintenance here's for her the detail service spring cleanup and then as a customer you see how well you did here um, so here would be spring cleanup but here for the customer as a whole you will probably run into some situations where you have um, customers who are losing you money for a particular service, but overall may be profitable. Or you may have customers who are hugely profitable, say for mowing, but because you're losing on other jobs, they're not. Uh, so this is all valuable information. It can uh, take into account travel time. So you've got, you know, here's an average dollar per hour, including travel time, 345. Here's the average without travel time, 388. Um, so that's the difference of what you're making. Now, this is a perfect time of year if you are doing contract renewals for you to take a look at this report because you should be able to see pretty quickly where you're losing money and who you need to then um, raise rates for without raising across the board and risking um, you know, alienating well-paying customers. Um, where does ITC record count travel time or record work time on a job? I thought you mentioned something earlier this week about being different from XE. Yes. So let's um, come here and go to daily and then to record work. So in record work, you have travel time here. And this is calculated, as I, as I think I mentioned, 
a little bit differently than Clip XE. Clip XE calculated travel time so that if you had um, customer A and customer B, travel time was how long it took you to get from A to B. Um, in, Clip X, in Clip ITC, it's a little different. You have customers A, B, and C. And we're looking at the travel time for customer B is half the time it took to go from A to B plus half the time it takes to go from B and to C. Um, that means if you've got a customer who you've know, got like six or seven customers in a line, they're relatively close together. And then you've got a customer way, you know, away from that last customer. Um, it takes half of the time it takes to get to that next account and, and apportions it back to the, to that other account customer so it's just a little bit different so it's a b and uh, again it's half of the so if you're starting out in the morning and you 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 know have um um like the route sheet when they leave the shop and then when they get to the first job um half of that time is accounted to that first customer likewise if in your app you've set up like a job that says shop time you're able to record that and then half of when the shop time morning ended to when they got to the first job would be the uh, tr the half the travel time to that first job and then the from that first job to the second half of that travel time um so that's how travel time let me see if i can just quickly kind of fill in these three in a row to illustrate that so yes Okay, so we're going to do 8 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. Save. Then come here. Then notice there's zero travel time showing here at this point. So now I do um, 8.45 to 9.15. Save. So now we've got this travel time. And now we'll shake it up a little bit. Yes. So we got um, 9.20 to 9.45. So notice how the travel time evolves as you enter data. Um, so that's how the travel time works and is calculated. Um, all right, so this, this is a great report for you. Again, I commend this to you to take a look at. And for a lot of, of, of cases, this is the most valuable part of the CLIP software program. Um, it, certainly, it helps to be able to have an app and to record work and to build through QuickBooks and to route your crews. But as a business, this is what will make or break your staying in business is the job costing report. Um, Okay, next, pre-service notifications report. <clears throat> Remember, we talked about you could set up pre-service notifications and, and that's set up within the job. So again, we come back here, we look at a job for Acme. And here is where it says pre-service notification. If you choose phone or both, then this report will show who's to be notified by calling because the ones notified by email, they'll just get the email. But here we get data. And so here we've got Bob Hope and Donald Trump. And here's the job name where they're going to be notified. Um, here are the phone numbers. You can hit print report. And then Here's more contact information for those. Um, and you could actually, you know, if you have your text call, you could print this out. It'd be kind of like a route sheet for them. And then they could call the, the customers there ahead of the service. Materials report. Okay, the materials report is used for you to track your materials. And we can choose what material you want. So let's say you need to give a report about pre-emergence. So you can um, filter that. So here are my pre-emergent services. And I can you know, do up to 50. I can export to Excel or PDF, clear the filter. And then I can do a date range. So if I have to give my pre-emergent usage for um, you know, 2021, go back to January 1st. And through uh, today, 
I can filter by EPA number, active ingredient name, and other factors that are in the um, in the material setup screen. Likewise, you can um, show what customers. So you can show where the pre-emergent was applied uh, at the customer. And then if you come back over to the end here, um, you've got the square footage that was applied. Um, you can you know limit the crew number you can you know sort by cusp by temperature wind speed weather conditions and then uh, back here let me come back a little bit no and i want to get the quantity all right so now let me just export this so you hit export to Excel, save and open. So here's the uh, so here's the quantity column here. Here's my um, cost here, price. Um, it's funny. It looks like the it treats the quantity as if it were. Um, a dollar value there so this is your report and you can then modify it on this form and you can make sure that it meets your local epa requirements for that okay so that's a material report um daily work report we already looked at this is the equivalent of what we call the final list of work done that clip would print for you after you posted work so here's the crew one, and you've got the name of the customer, address, service that was performed, time spent, revenue, and then it'll give you your dollar per hour here. So this is a valuable report to click, you know, to, to, to look at day by day to kind of stay on top because if you're, you know, if you had $25 an hour here, you want to find out what was happening. And so you could talk to the crew about this from yesterday if it's looking back a month or two the crew wouldn't remember what they were doing for that um so that's the daily work report okay the hard job cost reports we have job costing report here the hard job cost report doesn't mean it's more difficult but what it does mean is it will take into account like your employee cost here so if you do set up employees and you do put what their um, compensation is, you can then come in here and get a report. And I don't know, again, I don't have a lot of good information here because I just, well, so um, let's look at this. Okay, so here, um, employee costs. So George Jetson, the employee cost of doing this service was 650. Um, we come down let's see if i've got so so here's again charlie brown so it's got the employee cost here you've got then these two so this is giving you a little bit more fine-tuned information for job costing purposes so you still have the budgeted man hours actual hours if you track them comparison between actual and budgeted but then these are the ones that will then help you determine the cost of providing that service um, in terms of the employee cost and material cost if any for that um so i would suggest you know taking a look at this once you've uh, built up a little bit of data in the program for that all right then the job cost report to excel this is pretty much the same thing except you can dump it into excel easily from here um, contract comparison this is a very helpful report because what this allows you to do it allows you to see what has what's the value of the work you performed versus the installments you've collected now at the end of the year those two figures should be pretty close this report is really valuable mid-year let's say you've got a customer who's been paying you a monthly installment starting in march or april for your landscaping work and they call you in june they, they say no we're going to find someone new well it could be that 
in those first months during the spring when you started mowing and the grass has been wet and that's taken longer and when you've done the spring cleanup or you've done a couple of applications the value of the work you've performed is higher than the the couple of installments they've paid so what this is able to do is to kind of do a comparison there so you know whether you should try to pursue um, that guy and get your get money from him for the difference so let's take a look and see what this looks like um, okay so here's acme enterprises here are the installments for acme and then here are the services now what i might do is let me go back and just look at this for for, for customer number one that way we won't get too much clutter okay all right, so here are the installments that we collected. And again, you can dump it into Excel to, to add these up. And then here's the value of the jobs over here. But we get to the bottom of this and it shows that we've collected 5770 and the value of work has been under 4400. So that's actually pretty good for us. And the deviation is 1401. So again, this is that contract comparison, and it's very useful to do some. Um, also, you know, you can look at this during the season, and you see, okay, we're we're um, you know providing more work than we've collected for. How can we kind of back slow that down a little bit? Maybe shift the uh, mowing schedule from four times a month to three or something to to kind of make sure you get caught up. So these are are uh, these match. Next, and this is a report from our older clip, you've got job reports, some um, daily gross report. So this would allow you to see, okay, so for today, um, we have done this much work and here's the job value, material cost, manpower. So this, this will give you a total for the day. So we've done this $35 worth of work. It took four hours and we made 15 bucks an hour. So that's not really that great. And after travel time, we made a buck <laughs> 102. Um, but so this can kind of give you a report and you can export it to Excel to manipulate. Um, but this will give you a report just showing you uh, day by day how your crews are doing. Um, and, all right, so next um, we have uh, the employee section. Now, what we we try to enhance this because we try to want we want you to be able to view employees and see efficiencies etc for them um and the setup for this we covered kind of the first day so this would be where you um go into employee you set your employees up and then assign them to uh, crews under customize and then having um, assigned them whenever the crew does something the information related to that crew will then be applied to the individuals who have, who are on that crew. So that means that if a, a job they do is budgeted for five hours and it takes them eight, then that will show that each employee was inefficient by that amount. Um, all right, so let's take a look at the first one, which is the efficiency report. Um, so we're going to just do the month of December and we'll look at the summary. And we'll do all the employees. So let's see what this does. Okay. So here's uh, Dave Barry is the, uh, and so what, uh, let me see again, I don't have good data in some of this. So I'm getting a lot of zeros. Okay, here's a little bit better. So GL amount, the job value is 525 hours, man hours are 14. So um, the efficiency here is um, actually it's giving us the dollar per hour um, revenue for this thirty five seventy one. Um, you know, frankly, I I find this a, a difficult report to read easily, um, and part of it is just the value of my data that's in here. So let me see if I can find someone that makes sense. Um, so this is all the employees. So this is the GL value, budget crew, man hours, um, actual man hours. See, I'm, I don't have my man hours in here. Let me go back to the past and see if I've got some from earlier in the year when I was a little more careful in some of the information. So March 1st through um, 
now we'll go to April 30th. And we're just going to concentrate on one employee. Okay, so this is sometimes if there's no data, it just sticks at this other. Oh, we're three, three. Um, so here's for March 8th. So uh, let me see if I got some actual crew times in here. Yeah, I apologize. Oh, so I don't have. Um, oh, here's an example. So here's um, the GL value for the day. 11 hours budgeted, three hours actual. So this was very, a very good day um, on April 27th for this. And so here it's uh, his, his efficiency was 71%, um, revenue value 118. Um, and this is just based on the actual versus budgeted here. Um, so, yeah, and again, the efficiency report and then efficiency report hourly. Um, so let's look at this as a summary. We'll again pull up uh, Dave Barry. Oops. Dates. Okay. So during this time period for, you know, 37 budgeted, 66 actual, actual versus budgeted, he was over um, significantly. So, um, and then I don't have the pay in here. So that's why that I don't have a data for that. So this is a efficiency report for an employee for a longer period of time. Um, payroll report, this just shows hours. If you use clip to track when they clock in and out, which is easy to do on the app, it will then create a report for you. And it also does it, um, if you go with piecework, you can pay based on budgeted man hours. So this would be based on the time clock. This would be there um, based on how much budgeted time these, the, the jobs were um, had. Um, so this is a payroll report for that. Uh, uh, payroll summary, crew route map. Okay, this um, will show you um, using Google Maps then. Uh, could, um, I may not be able to see this because this I think is, this is based on the, um, yeah, this is a map that's based on capturing GPS data on the, um, for the work that they did during that time period. Um, what you're able to do is you are able to set up a, um, to, uh, uh, in the settings. So let's come here to settings. You're able here under company info to crew geo time location. So that means you could capture where the device is located every five, 10, 15, et cetera, minutes. Um, so, and this then is stored in the, and you're able then through this report to go back and look and say, okay, we got a call from, you know, Mrs. Jones that on the first, they never showed up. So I could come here, show the report and it would show a map and it would show their travels and their location every five minutes. It would also show where they are at based on the geo stamp. So when they hit start or stop in the app, it geo stamps their location in addition to time stamping. Um, and this, that information then is, is displayed here under the, um, crew route map. Um, employees on jobs. So this is a report where you can look and see for a given customer. Um, again, we'll go with customer one. We'll go back to Monday. So on, uh, we did work there the 14th pre-emergent. If I click on the little carrot there, it then shows me who did that job. Again, this could be a, a way of finding out not only in the customer history, but if uh, it, on this screen, if a customer calls you with a complaint, you could see who actually was on the crew that day uh, to hold accountable for the complaint. 
um, employee job, okay, employee budget versus actual hours. This is like the job costing report, except it will tell them, um, it won't show them the financials that you've made $60 an hour or $40 an hour or what have you, but it will compare the budgeted man hours with the actual clocked hours. So this would be a way of <clears throat> talking to an employee about, you know, becoming more efficient or commending them. If you're going to give bonuses, you can say, okay, this is why your, your hours clocked are consistently under the budgeted hours for that. Um, employee job hours by category. Oops, sorry, well, I'll come back to that other one. What this enables you to do is the category here is set up um, in jobs. Now, this is one place where the category may be useful. And if you've not set it up, you can do so. And then from the pattern job, you can push out the category value into, into the, those jobs. Um, so some companies um, use this to help evaluate uh, what the um, hours are for a particular section of their business. So if you want to do your lawn service, you could dump it to Excel and sort lawn service total hours um, for that. So it, and it's a way of just again, and seeing where your employees are spending their time too. Um, uh, so it's uh, employee job hours by category. Uh, that report was in XE. The format was different in XE than we have here. Um, salesperson and commission. Okay, so again, back into a, a job here. Down here, you've got a commission fee button. So you click here. You're going to choose the employee. So we'll say Jorge. And his, um, he gets a 3% commission on this job and date sold where you start the commission you could then you know I'll, we'll go ahead we'll be generous we hit save here um all right so i want to do a commission report for jorge for um this job so i come in here i select him and then i do the date range here for this year is three percent. Oh well, that's oh, it's, it's yeah, um, yeah. I, I did not record the history of this. I'm kind of entering this after the fact. It would have had to have been associated with that job historically when it was done. So from the point you set it up, it will then calculate the um, commission for them. Okay, um, next is uh, route sheets. So we have already looked at doing route sheets here. Then underneath that, we have work projections. So if you want to look ahead to see what's on the schedule, you're able to come in here. So we'll go job upcoming details. And we can then say, okay, what's, what's on the schedule for January? So you can come in here, choose the future date range, I'll slim it down a little bit. So we'll say the first uh, week in January, the first of the, no. So the first through the seventh. And you can limit it to a particular crew. So we'll look at crew one here and customers. Okay. This report can take a while to run because it has to generate a lot of information and then it does calculations. So rather than just looking at the next scheduled visit date, this looks at the whole schedule setup for customers. So if the is the month January checked, is the first week of the month checked. And so, and one thing that this is a little um, cumbersome in the sense that it does one page at a time. Um, and I've talked to development about that to get rid of the page break or to at least give you the option of getting rid of the page break because um, it's nice to see this in a more condensed format, but you are able then to um, print this out and, and you can dump it into Excel to manipulate, et cetera. So this is uh, a work projections in detail for you to look ahead. You can see, um, you know, how much you're charging. Um, it'll show you the budgeted hours. So that means you can plan and say, okay, we need to 
put more people or take people off of cruise for particular dates in the future. Um, Again, the summary is just the same with the summary. Materials needed, this would be, again, you're looking ahead and you're seeing what materials are budgeted for a particular uh, future time frame. Um, again, detail summary, likewise revenue there. Um, okay, then reprint statements. So we come up um, here, reprint statements. This just allows you to um, reprint for the for a past billing. So I want to reprint what I did on the 14th, and I did um, one in one statement there, and here it is. So we've got the um, overdue statement, overdue um, invoice report. You can print for overdue invoices, and this just gives you the ability to recreate uh, certain statements from the past for that. Okay, boy, I'm out of breath. Um, finally, let's look at custom reports. Okay, now again, back to the beginning, CLIP has built-in reports, what we've been looking at all this time. But if certain reports don't quite meet your needs, you can come in to do this, as well as if you for, do uh, a mailing, for instance, this would be one way to set that up. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in, I'm going to um, create a report. So for some reason, they're called views here, not just reports. So I'll click add view, and I'm going to um, call this class report. Okay, so you've got the title. Now, the next thing you want to do is choose the um, database. So my scenario is I want to send a letter to all of my mowing customers. So I need customer and job information. If I just wanted a list of all my jobs, I could do job only. If I want uh, all of the mowing for 2021, I would use customer and history. If I just wanted to send a Christmas card to my accounts, I could use customer only. If I wanted to look at what I've been paid, I could use customer and payments. But for this job, I want to send a letter. So I need to know my mowing accounts. So I'm going to do customer and job. Now here is a check box. Um, if you check it, that means other people using Clip ITC can um, access this report. If it's not checked, it means only you can access it. Okay, so I'm going to start with the account number. Scroll down a little bit to do this in logical order. So I'm going to do first name, last name. Um, and this is going to be the billing information. So I come up to um, billing address, billing city, billing state. And for some reason, we don't have the billing zip code on there. So I'm going to use a property zip code and hope I'm right. OK, so now I've got enough information. Oh, then one other thing I'll do is the greeting here. OK, so there we are. And then the next thing I'm going to do is come down to the job fields. And I want to get um, job number. And I'll get the description too to make sure that is. Uh, let's see, I'm sorry. Job. These are in alphabet. Oh, job name. There it is. All right. So there we've got now the fields that we want. So we're going to save this. Okay, so please write value. Oh, okay. So I've got to do a condition. Okay, so what I want is I want this for my active customers. So I come in here and the condition is like a filter so I can limit who I'm going to send this to. So customer status is, now notice here, you just click on it. It's, it's a lot simpler and active. Now I'm going to add another status and job number is one. Now you could do other things. You could do job number is greater than or is less than or equal to. So you've got uh, some ability to fine tune this. So, but at this point, customer status active. So now I'm gonna save this. And I'm gonna find the report. And I'm going to, if I process, I can do it here on the screen. 
So here is my report. Um, I'm going to export to Excel. I'm going to call this um, class report. There it is in Excel. I'm also going to open up Word because I'm doing a letter. Blank document. Okay, so, um, all right, now we're going to do a little lesson in mail merges. So I enable editing for this. Okay, all right, so what I want to do is I want to then um, send a, a letter to my customers. So I go back into Word and I go to mailings start mail merge letter, select recipients. So use an existing list. That's my Excel spreadsheet. So oh, where did I put those? Oh, there it is, okay. So I choose my class report there in Excel, hit open and then hit okay. Okay, so now here is my letter. So I'm gonna give it to uh, today's date, December, 17th, tab down, and now I'm going to add my merge fields. So I come here, I want um, the first name, space, last name, billing address, billing city, comma, Billing state, space, property zip code, my greeting, um, thank you for letting us cut your And then you can, if you needed to, uh, you know, because you've dumped this into Excel, you could say, okay, here's, uh, oh, I didn't add the price. So if I had the price here, I could add, have the price. I could have a 4% um, uh, price increase with the new price and all that could be merged into the letter. But at this point, I'm kind of done. Let me come back in here. Um, Bill Crawford success landscaping okay sorry um john hold on sorry which tab did you get to get here oh sorry john i didn't see that so i'm not sure well let me go back in and we'll take a look real quick so what we're doing we're in reports custom reports we created the report and then we hit export to excel and that opened up our excel file here then we opened up a Word document and we created the document we needed. And now when you do the mail merge, you can do preview. So here is, you know, I'm gonna have to clean up my data. So here I can scroll through and see my customers here. Now, if I wanted to, I could just come in and I can, you know, edit these. Oops, well, well, so let me, um oh i broke it okay so i just have to renew put that field back in there so okay back here yeah being able to do mail merge is actually a pretty valuable um tool to have in your toolbox and then if i have finished and merge i can say edit individual documents okay and now here are my letters so it is compiling these so see down here it has done 97 100 100 letters um so just in you know, you know a couple of minutes you've done a mail merge and this can be um 
and you look at this, you go, okay, no, I don't want it that way. So you can then edit this. So it's a very simple way to do renewals um, out of clip into um, a word and into Excel and then into Word. Okay, so back to um, the custom reports. Okay. Um, so again, you know, the value of this is it allows you to set filters to see information you want, and then you can, you know, do it to Excel or, or from the preview screen, um, you're able to, well, let me save this and go back out. Again, you can come back in and add field. So like I would probably go in and add the price field to that. Um, so again, class report. Um, yeah, most of these as far as printing are, are limited to going into Excel from here. Um, but this allows you to say sort by certain columns. So I drag the greeting column up here and now it is sorted by greeting. And if I come to the end, that's where we got the deers, deers. Um, okay, is create merge in custom reports like XE? Um, yes, that would be this. So if you hit merge report here, and hit, um, let me see, let me hit process, see what this looks like. Although this is a poor example because I only have one job. Um, it's actually, it's kind of funny, it's, it's sent to you as an email, um, the report. So it's not something you would see here on the screen and, and my email is fictitious, so I really can't get to my account very easily to show that. But yes, this is the same as the create merge option there. Can you print address labels in ITC with filters? Only by doing this merge. If you go into Word, when we looked at the, um, the merge, here's a labels option. So it's not quite the same as XE allowed you to do with a kind of more direct to, to labels and gave you a half dozen or uh, different label samples you could use for that. Um, Okay, so um, 208, uh, we got a little bit of time for questions. Uh, open it up, not just for the reports, but also for anything about Clip ITC that I can answer for you. Okay, can you show how to email that letter? Ooh, I don't know if I can, John, for that. But one one thing, if you did want to email that letter to customers, this is what I would suggest you set up because um, under daily, so let me come out here under daily, and here you've got the message customer where you can email accounts. Now this is driven by what's on the schedule, but as I may have mentioned, one company I talked to and showed them this feature, they said they would were going to go ahead and create a job in each customer called um, marketing, or you could call it email. And what you would do then is just put all of those email jobs on the schedule, so this would say email here, it could be assigned maybe to crew 99 or something. And then you come into message customer and create the email to email all your customers. So that's another way, that's a way to email customers without the uh, going through the mail merge process for that. Um, okay, How, where are to do's entered? Um, to do's are again back under the customer here and to do's. So this is actually, there are two places they're entered. One is you can enter them manually here. The other is when you use the app in the field and you create a general note, that also then creates a to-do for that customer. So information coming in from the field is not lost, but it creates an action item. Um, so those are the two ways they are created. Um, okay. Okay, uh, Jim, I got that. So thank you. Okay, um, any other questions?
Well, I'm not seeing anyone respond, so let me give it another moment. Um, otherwise, you've got my email, um, billcclip.com. Let me just bring that up again. So here's my email. Um, now, starting next next week is a short week, and the week following is a short week, too. But we are working uh, Monday through Thursday next week, and we're working actually Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday the following week. We got a four-day weekend for Christmas. That was nice. Um, but otherwise, I'll have avail availability then and then into um, January uh, for one-to-one -one conversations. Okay. Um, well, oh, here uh, does there are there more Clip ITC classes on the agenda for next month? Um, we hope to. We don't have any on yet, but we probably the second week of January will have a class, and we may have it earlier in the day. Um, oh, and by the way, I will email all of you um, the links to the four classes that I'm able to, uh, the, the ones from Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and today. Um, and when we get the fifth one up, and when we get all these on YouTube, we'll send you those links as well for that. Um, folks, well, it's been a pleasure, and I hope you all have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and we will, I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks a lot. Bye.